Work It is the new Netflix original film hitting Netflix this Friday. Today, by the time I'm filming this, hi, my name is Max Hurry. Welcome to Max Talks Movies. Today, I'll be reviewing Work It, which is the brand new Netflix original film. Have you seen Work It already? Let me know in the comment section down below if you haven't. Tell me, have you seen the trailer? Are you excited to eventually get to this movie? So this movie's starring Sabrina Carpenter, Lisa Koshy, Jordan Fisher, uh, Keenan Lon uh, Lonsdale. It's a pretty interesting story. Um, Sabrina Carpenter is in the lead. She plays this high school senior. She's got a 4.0. She's just the perfect student, and she wants to get to Duke. But during her interview, she kind of seems too by the books, doesn't really have any passion outside of of school so um she her at her school there's already this amazing dance team that, that wins the work it competition basically every year so then she basically takes credit for that and then because duke really thinks she's a dancer she needs to dance so then she creates her own team with her friend uh, who was on that uh, high school team lisa koshi who drops that team to join her uh to make this really interesting dance group they also add in jordan fisher um, who is our, who was the best dancer in the state, but tore his ACL, so he couldn't really become that amazing dancer. So he also has to get involved. There's a lot going on, but that is what this movie has become to become the Work It champion. Um, I, I didn't see any publicity for this movie. The only thing I could tell was I heard about this being a dance movie. Um, I really, uh, it feels like I it feels like you're going to see this type of movies on Netflix a lot, okay? Um, and you got to stick with that when you head in. You need, the thing I'll say about this movie is that you need to know what movie you're watching. If you're going in to watch every Netflix movie just to critique it, I would stay away from this movie. Um, I literally just saw a movie with dance called Feel the Beat, which came out last month. Um, and I, I really want to preface that you need to understand, again, what movie you're walking into. Um, there, there are going to be a lot of cliches in this movie. There's a lot of cheesiness. There's a lot of aspects of the movie, of the story, of the characters that you've seen a million times. But what makes this movie work, in my opinion, more than most Netflix original movies in this dance genre, and we get a lot of these, is that this might be one of the stronger casts in this genre. The cast is super charming. They have great chemistry with each other. Um, and, you do, and you do care about where these characters end up at the end. Now, yes, for a lot of these characters, you exactly know what is going to happen. The movie isn't afraid of letting you know what's going to happen. It's a very predictable movie. Um, if you've seen these type of movies before, like Step Up or even that Feel the Beat movie I saw last month um, on Netflix, then you already know what this movie is going to be, where our characters end up, and what happens at the end of the movie. But that's not where you're in for. You're in for these characters and this cast and the choreography of the dance. There's a lot of dance sequences in the movie and you need to under, you need to really like the choreography. And for those reasons, I really did like the movie enough. Um, I got, this movie has a Sabrina Carpenter who I saw in Tall Girl. Um, she wasn't really in Tall Girl that much, but she did play uh, a, a big role in that movie. She is a really good lead star, I think. Um, she's got really great um, energy and charisma. Um, even though you understand where her character is going to be going, they don't really give you that ridiculousness like they do in other movies. You would feel like in this type of movie, she would just be a person who can't dance to then the first competition. Everyone thinks she's the best dancer. This movie takes itself at that point very seriously in the fact that she has to learn how to become a dancer in ways that I wasn't expecting, which was a very good positive. Really, once she gets into that dance stuff with Jordan Fisher's character, the movie really picks up with charisma, energy, and life to it. Um, I thought the first act was really weak uh, because I knew exactly what movie we were going to go into. And I felt like just another Netflix movie that has a completely cheesy uh, movie with cheesy young actors and with a plot that we've seen, especially on Netflix, a million times. But once you get into that second act, as I said, once Jordan Fisher's character really gets plugged into this situation, um, the movie really picks up. I also think Lisa Koshy as um, Sabrina Carpenter's best friend, Jazz, who wants to become this amazing dancer, but gives up being on the best team to be with her best friend in this squad, just so she can possibly make it to New York Academy of Dance. Her character was also a, a greatness to watch. Um, her one-liners when she's not with Sabrina Carpenter don't always hit, but uh, Lisa Koshy really goes for it. Um, you really care about their uh, friendship um, and they have great chemistry with each other and you know that they need to be resolved for this group to work. Jordan Fisher, I think, works here 
much more than he does in to the all to, to all the boys uh two even though i think he's good in that movie his character is a for me a lot stronger in this movie than it was into all the boys too i thought his character is one of the reasons why that movie was down a slot for me but he was still good and jordan fisher who i really learned about from gaming uh, when he was on you know twitch and stuff still is um now seeing him act is really cool i think he's got a lot of potential a lot of a lot of chemistry. He's always brings light to the screen, um, and his character is great. Now, the movie, as I said, does have plenty of issues. At times, your kind of common sense stuff kind of gets thrown out the door, but that's the type of movie that you're watching. Now, the issues that I can't really get behind um, in this movie is that the cliches are kind of hit to a point of absurdity. Um, there's a huge relationship in the film between Serena Carpenter's relationship and her mom. Her mom just always wanted her to go to Duke because her dad, uh, uh, Sabrina Carpenter's dad passed away at 12 and that she, he always took her to Duke stuff, to Duke all the time, go to Duke football games, just go to Duke all the time. So her mom felt a responsibility to do that. But for me, they really beat you over the head that Sabrina Carpenter and her mom are just always not on the same page because Sabrina Carpenter now wants to have fun while her mom wants her to really get the grades up to go to Duke. Um, for me, they really beat you over the head. The resolution at the end felt super rushed, super non-realistic. It wouldn't really happen. Um, and that was one of the weaker aspects of the movie. Uh, I felt that some of the dance sequences actually in the first act were kind of weak. Um, there was one one-on-one -on -one dance sequence, which could have been really great. Just felt kind of weird. Um, and it didn't really make, why, make a lot of sense why it was happening. But again, the second and the third acts do really pick up. Um, but again, the movie is super cheesy. You know where it's going. Um, there's one thing that I absolutely loved, which my favorite scene in the movie was when Sabrina Carver's talking to this, uh, she works at this um, elderly home and she has this one conversation with this elderly woman and it was, my, my, my opinion, the favorite scene of the movie. It has a lot of good messages, but for me, I was walking thinking, you know, this could be another PG movie and then an S-bomb comes in. Um, they talk about Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, and what an old guy does when he watches that movie. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, this is definitely not for kids. So this is a different movie because it's really trying to reach kind of my market, the teenage to college and above market, instead of the really, the kids stuff, which was what Feel the Beat hit on. Um, a more mature movie, but again, the movie gets in its own way. It kind of beats you over the head. We're kind of told how our characters feel about each other. We're not really, we're not really shown. Um, you know, I like our friendship here. We don't really get that they, that why they would be friends. They're just friends. Uh, we're just told that we're their friends, you know? So I think that the movie could have added a little more time. The movie is only an hour and a half. An hour 33 is the full runtime of this movie. So again, super short movie, easy breeze on Netflix. I would give this movie a three out of five stars. Yes, guys, a positive grade, a 60%. It's a very fine Netflix movie. It has, of course, tons of issues with it. But for me, because of a charming cast, it makes us an above average movie. Um, guys, stay tuned. Tomorrow morning, I'll be going live with my friend Joe. We'll be talking about our top 10 Pixar villains. If you missed my review yesterday, I reviewed An American Pickle, the new Seth Rogen film. And I have a whole check on my playlist. I'll put it next to my head. I, have a, I, I will add this to my playlist of all the new Netflix movies that I've seen so far this year. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.